This is the new Mattel Justice League Action Power Connects Swamp Thing. Swamp Thing comes with share and connect accessories that you can share and, well, connect with other Justice League action figures. Before we have a look at those accessories, let's figure out how tall Swamp Thing stands, and he's only about four and a half inches high, which right out the gates could be one of my big problems with this figure. He should be a lot taller than some of the other heroes that we've seen in this line. In fact, for some comparisons, we'll bring the camera back here and bring in some of the ones that we've looked at before, and I thought usually we kind of compare him to like Firestorm and stuff like that, but I bring in some of the other Justice League action figures that maybe we haven't compared these figures to in the past. There's Batman, there's Superman, of course there's Wonder Woman there as well. They're all roughly about the same height. Uh, Batman is a little bit taller. Uh, Superman, you could also say, is a little bit taller. And uh, also just for, <laughs> without knocking everything over, uh, I was going to say one of the other th th figures that we could compare him to one that doesn't make appearances that often. This Wonder Woman just does not stand at well at all. Compare him also to Joker. This very awkwardly colored Joker that's got two different shades of purple. Again, these figures don't stand the greatest. Well, let me see if we can put Wonder Woman over there. Just very, very tricky to get to actually stand. The point I'm trying to make, as best I can to get these to balance, I'll take Wonder Woman off completely, is that uh, Swamp Thing really should be a lot taller than all of these. At the very least, he should be a lot taller than Batman. Batman and Superman are both taller than him. He really should be, I mean, to be to be fair, he probably should be about there or so, but it doesn't seem like the figures consistently are about the same height uh, when it comes to the Justice League action stuff. Let's now talk accessories. He comes with this, which is kind of um, kind of like an, a wood kind of backpack, so to speak. And then there's this claw that's on the back. It's supposed to, based on the instructions, supposed to fit on the back of Swamp Thing. And at the very least, you can fan out the blades or fan out the, the claw parts. But as you can see, it sticks out way too far. Um, bringing in the uh, the packaging there, you can see right at the top there, that's how they've got it placed. But what they don't tell you, what they don't tell you, is that uh, it does stick out way too far. It does also come with a spear, or the equivalent of a spear, that's got some nice spikes and stuff sticking out from them. And it's supposed to fit on top like this. You can only imagine that how back heavy it ultimately makes Swamp Thing that he, well, he's going to fall over on you. What you can also do too, is you can detach these so that if you don't want them together, you can remove them in their entirety. I mean, they, they only really just tab into place like that. And might I also add, they sit really loose. Taking one of them off, you can still peg it onto the back like so. And really the claw, you could either have that also on the back like that. And I guess you could even bring it around and give them Give them these little kind of antlers. You could do that as well. Or you can also use these as weapons because it's the same peg that attaches into the hands. And you can kind of give them a claw and you can also give them this kind of missile launching, I don't know what you would call it, a bazooka if you will. Or you could even pretend like it's a, like a chainsaw, like a, a you know, <laughs> which would be somewhat ironic. Something that would be cutting down trees is being done by somebody who protects trees and it's made out of a tree so uh, there's that or and there's more what you can also do too is you can in the packaging you have him displayed with this now this sits way too loose there's really no way to get it to sit tighter unless you fit it right around like literally right on this ring which is almost next to impossible at times to do if you get it kind of around it, it will fit tighter. But again, like getting it around his hand, it's actually even easier, I think, if you just put it in his hand and then just kind of lower it down. 
it does make it a little a little bit more stuck in place so you can do that as well at the very least swamp thing at least has themed weapons weapons that make sense for him at the you know you have like a backpack that looks like a bit of wood something that's been carved out of wood which again i find so hilariously ironic and like everything looks like it's plant-based so it does look like something that he would wield uh, by the way, this is supposed to be a flick fire or kind of a pop firing missile. Let me just put him over to the side so I don't knock him over. Uh, you just basically press the back there and it shoots it out. But it doesn't it doesn't have a spring inside. It's really just frictioned. Like it, once it gets past that point, it just pops out. And I guess because it's a little bit loose, you can also rotate the blade too. You know, if you want to. Okay, so having a look at the figure itself, I have to admit, as much as I think this is one of the closest cartoon-accurate uh, sculpts on these figures, Swamp Thing really disappoints just by its sheer size, his sheer size. He's way, again, too, too short. Again, comparing him to, say, the likes of Superman. They really shouldn't be the same height. Swamp Thing should be a little bit taller, for example. It does also make his legs, I mean, these figures already suffer from this, but it makes Swamp Thing specifically very, it looks as if he's very underproportioned, like his legs seem really short and stumpy. His torso isn't so bad. If only his legs were just a little bit longer, I think that would work quite well for him. Having a look at his face, let's bring the camera in there. Again, I would say it's one of the more cartoon accurate sculpts. It does actually look quite a bit like him from the cartoon. I don't know what this is. I don't think it's supposed to be part of him. Instead, I feel like it's a little bit of paint that may involve a little bit of scraping off, even though I can't, can't actually get it off of his torso. I've noticed that the plastic on his arms and the head and the legs seem all the right color, but his torso seems a rather irregularly matte shaped or matte paint to it it's clearly a different color than everything else it's nowhere to the extreme as joker i still don't know what happened to joker but it is uh, it is noticeable that it's not it's not quite the same the same plastic that they used here he does have some nice sculpting otherwise really with the vines and the almost like a leaf um overlaps there on his shoulders and also in his arms, even his legs get it as well. And yes, he does have pegs hole, peg holes on the undersides of his feet. But to be honest, I've yet to find a display stand that can actually accommodate these Justice League action figures. They just don't have the prop. Their pegs are way too small to do anything really with them. Posability on this guy. There's one other thing I want to talk about, but we'll get through posability first. Head rotates all the way around and hinges up and down via a ball joint. The shoulders normally would be able to hinge outward, but it seems like they get stuck primarily because I think the sculpting of the shoulder hinders really a lot of the movement of bringing the arms out. That's, again, about as much as you can really get out of them. Arms rotate all the way around. He does also have a hinge in the elbow, which in that same hinge allows him to rotate his, fo his lower forearms. Has no articulation in the wrists, but he has waist swivel. And lastly, he also has forward and back on the legs, and you can also split the legs, bend at the knee, and you can also rotate the legs. Other companies take notice. I mean, these are fairly inexpensive figures. They're probably about $12 or so if you want to pick them up. But at the very least, you can see he does have articulation in the elbows and the knees, something that I dare say Hasbro suffers with when it comes to their releases. Um, you know, I'm looking in the direction of, uh, you know, like the movie tie-in figures, for example. They just keep them limited to this articulation, this articulation, and that's it. And uh, Justice League Action really is a good example. I mean, they still have multiverse figures out there. They're not saying, well, we have to keep the limitations here, so people, because then people won't buy the multiverse figures. I think that's, I think that's hogwash. What did you say? I said hogwash. Just before we wrap up this video, this is the one thing I wanted to remind myself to, to remind you guys or to tell you guys about. He has some strange rattling to him. 
I can't figure out what exactly rattles to him. It's almost as if... It's almost like there's something inside of his torso. I thought it might be this the, the actual peg on the back, but the peg looks like it's sculpted to the rest of his torso. So I don't know what's actually rattling on him. Not really a point that was necessary, but I feel as uh, the duty of the reviewer here that I have to mention anything and everything about this specific figure. So he, he does have a little bit of paint, which I can't seem to scrape off. And uh, he is a little on the rattly side. So one thing I feel is one of the more successful outings under the Justice League action banner. He looks the most like the cartoon. It's not to say he doesn't have problems. He could have been a lot taller, which I guess is really my only nitpick with him. I can live with the fact that the legs, the arms, and the head are one type of plastic, and his rattling torso seems to be a completely different story. I can live with that. What I can't live with, though, as nitpicking as it may sound, is the fact that he really should have been taller. He ultimately looks short and squat, and while he does fit in well with the other figures, he certainly does not meet the height restrict or the height uh, standards that he has in the cartoon. The cartoon is a lot taller. I don't know why they couldn't have made him, at the very least, a taller figure. Uh, his accessories are decent, passable at the very least. It's not ridiculous in the sense that some of the other Just League Action uh, figures have faced, where I'm looking at the accessories, I'm thinking, why would they even have included them? Swamp Thing, I'll give it this. His accessories are plant-based. Oh, it does look like something he could theoretically wield. Yes, an all-around decent enough figure, with really the only strike being his height. He's a nice-looking pickup and should be available now in stores if you guys are interested in picking this guy up for yourself. And actually, I just found this guy while I was doing grocery shopping. That's why I usually go to places like Walmart to grocery shop and not places that solely sell food because there's other things I can get a gander at while I'm actually supposed to be going out and picking up milk and eggs. Thank you, Walmart. Uh, if you guys want to go back and have a look at some of the other Justice League action reviews that I've done, there's actually a playlist on this channel. Yeah, it's called Justice League Action. Make sure you also hit that little subscribe button below this video if you wanted to stay tuned for uh, new videos coming onto this channel. You'll never miss a beat when those new videos hit. I'm trying to think of, I guess, no other way to describe it, but when they hit and I guess they go in your subscriber timeline... Yeah, I guess that's how YouTube's doing it now. It may change next week, but that's what's working with it right now. Uh, more videos, guys, will be coming your way. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.